So now the first thing that we understand is the meaning of the word portfolio. Portfolio is simply a combination of two or more assets or securities together which will generally have different risk and return ca characteristics. Now let us imagine that we have two assets with us asset A and asset B. Expected return on those assets let us say 20 percent and 30 percent. Now we want to see what is the level of risk of these assets. Now for the purpose of this topic risk would be defined in terms of standard deviation. Okay, but of course later on you would understand that standard deviation is not the only measure of risk. There are multiple measures. But as far as this topic is concerned, for us the only definition of risk that exists is volatility or standard deviation. Let us say standard deviation of this stock is 80% and standard deviation of this stock is 85%. Does it seem like a very high standard deviation? Yes, both A and B appear to be an extremely volatile stock, right? 80% means a very significant amount of standard deviation. Now imagine a scenario, if you combine the assets A and B together and create a portfolio out of it, does it appear like a risky portfolio? Yes, because this portfolio will have significant amount of volatility. Do you agree? It would be a risky portfolio? Yes. The answer is not necessary. You can create a very safe portfolio using asset A and B if, if the correlation between these two assets is negative. So imagine a scenario where correlation between these two assets is almost minus 1 or 0.9. So now what will happen is whenever A is decreasing because the correlation is negative B will increase so portfolio value will remain more or less there. Whenever B is decreasing A will increase and again the portfolio value will remain more or less at the same level which means when we are calculating standard deviation of the portfolio we have to consider what is the standard deviation of the individual assets, what is the weight of those assets in your portfolio but what we also have to consider is the correlation coefficient between those two variables. So now first thing that you would write in your notes is expected return expected return of a portfolio an expected return of a portfolio is nothing but a simple weighted average So let us say we have portfolio A and portfolio B. Expected return of portfolio A is 20%, B is 35%. The weight of portfolio or asset A in your portfolio is 80 and asset B in your portfolio is 20. You want to find out how much return you would earn out of this particular portfolio so you would simply calculate a weighted average which would be 23 percent are we doing okay here you try one more should i clear up the screen 80 into 20 percent 16 35 into 20 percent 7 and then just add them up Is it fine? Let's do one more. Again we have A and B. Let us say expected return 15% and 20%. Standard deviation, no not standard deviation, weight 40%, 60%. What is the expected return on the portfolio? So this would be 6 plus this would be 
12th so we are looking at expected return on the portfolio of 18% are we doing fine yeah this is percentage percentage so 18% now next thing portfolio standard deviation the formula that we would be using to calculate portfolio standard deviation weight 1 standard deviation 1 square plus weight 2 standard deviation 2 square plus 2 into weight 1 into weight 2 standard deviation 1 standard deviation 2 into correlation coefficient the whole thing under root last is a r r is correlation coefficient let us say this is a this is b standard deviation of portfolio a is 50 percent portfolio b is 20 percent weights 40 percent 60 percent correlation coefficient 0 0.5 calculate standard deviation of the portfolio See how, how you can do it efficiently on your calculator. Let's do it together. What I generally do is I do not use one of these two numbers as a decimal. Okay, that that uh, improves your speed uh, for calculation. So uh, let's do it together. 15 into 0 0.4, 15 into 0 0.4, x square. So that would be 36. STO1 then 20 into 0 0.6 20 into 0 0.6 x square how much 144 STO2 then 2 into 0 0.4 into 0 0.6 into 15 into 20 into 0 0.5 equal to STO3 how much 7 72 RCL1 plus RCL2 plus RCL3 under root two fifty two under root how much 15 point 87 so 15.87 is your answer done now the first observation here that we have a large weight 60 percent into this 20 so had we just calculated weighted average it would have been 20 plus 6 sorry 12 plus 6 it would have been how much 18 but compared to the weighted average this value came out to be less than that why because your correlation was less than 1 make sense no then it is a weighted average okay I think for just write down just write down this in your notes this part can I say that standard deviation 1 into standard deviation 2 into correlation coefficient is nothing but covariance so if you see a covariance you substitute that in place of these three values and again it will fetch you the same answer so that's the first thing that you would write down that SD1 into SD2 into R is equal to covariance and therefore the alternate formula for portfolio standard deviation weight 1 standard deviation 1 square weight 2 standard deviation 2 square 2 weight 1 weight 2 standard deviation 1 standard deviation 2 into covariance and then we would put this under root uh -huh. I'm so sorry we don't need standard deviation anymore just the covariance are we fine now second observation
formula is weight 1 standard deviation 1 square weight 2 standard deviation 2 square 2 I am writing slightly differently weight 1 standard deviation 1 weight 2 standard deviation 2 into r under root let us call this as a so this is a square plus b square plus 2 a b r what if r is equal to 1 then it is simply a plus b square under root do you agree and therefore it is simply a plus b therefore it is simply weight 1 standard deviation 1 plus weight 2 standard deviation 2 so when the correlation is equal to 1 there are no benefits of diversification your portfolio standard deviation is simply a weighted average correct please write this down now what if correlation coefficient is equal to minus 1 if correlation coefficient is minus 1 then it would be a square plus 2 b square minus 2 a b and therefore it would be simply weight 1 standard deviation 1 minus weight 2 standard deviation 2 right so just write down this part that if r is equal to 1 r is equal to minus 1 then standard deviation of the portfolio is equal to done writing then write down a testable sentence below this it is possible to construct a portfolio it is possible to construct a portfolio with zero standard deviation with zero standard deviation when correlation coefficient is minus one so far we've learned two things one how to calculate expected return of a portfolio second how to calculate standard deviation of the portfolio now we would be discussing work done by professor harry markowitz reduced are you saying reduced yes he's right higher the correlation lower the benefits of diversification but if your correlation is negative automatically risk of your portfolio will go down right if you want to put this in a real life perspective the reason why investment advisors recommend you to buy gold because historically not it doesn't exist that relationship doesn't exist anymore but at least in the past gold used to exhibit negative correlation with equity as asset class so if the equity markets are going down gold will increase that's negative correlation and therefore the portfolio standard deviation as a whole used to come down is that fine now we were discussing works of professor harry markowitz what harry markowitz did is now i would strongly recommend you to go and read about uh, who this gentleman was and what work he did on portfolio management it was a cross-sectional work between economics and mathematics and in fact when he was uh, presenting his research paper for phd that time the panel asked him that are you proposing this research to be under economics are you proposing this to be under mathematics and what he essentially did he said let me introduce the concept of optimization into portfolio management so he so he introduced the optimization technique in portfolio management to achieve certain uh, better returns to so see what he did is now we are going to integrate everything that we've learned so far let's keep a simple case of only two assets asset a and asset b we have expected return of both the assets let us say 20 percent and 25 percent we have standard deviation of both the assets 10 percent and 12 percent we also have correlation of both the assets which is 0.5 okay now we are not deciding here in the portfolio management section should we choose a or should we choose b that was done before you finalize a and b that means 
we have filtered both A and B. What Harry Markowitz is helping us to decide what proportion we should buy in what proportion we should buy A and B. That means using the portfolio or asset of A and B, we can create infinite number of portfolios. Are you agree? 1% in A, 99% in B, 2% in A, 98%, we can create infinite number of portfolios. So he said what can be done so that it will help us decide what is that best possible proportion in which we should buy. So there are two conditions or two ways in this uh, in which we can look at it. One, when short sell is not allowed. Second, when the short sell is allowed. Meaning of short sell is now if you would observe carefully B seems like a smart portfolio compared to A. Why? Because the returns in security A are two times the standard deviation. Agree? Whereas returns in security B is slightly more than the two times. Isn't it? It should have been 24, it is 25. So if we short asset A, so if you have 100 rupees with you, you sell asset A worth 100 and you invest 200 into asset B, your returns would be all the more higher. Is that correct? So for the timing, let us see what happens if the short sell is not allowed. So he started creating all possible portfolios. Okay, so portfolio where first weight of asset A is 1%, B of 99, then 2, 98. And then he started plotting standard deviation and expected return onto a scatter plot. And once he did that, he got a graph like this. This particular graph is called in the FRM part 1 syllabus as portfolio possibility frontier. Portfolio possibility frontier. Now this portfolio possibility frontier is divided or you can see it in two separate segments. This part here in black, can I say that this is concave? Agree? And this part here in the blue, can I say this is convex? Now, how do you read this graph? Let's say an investor comes to you. He says, I want to take risk of 6%. So for 6%, we have two portfolios. Let us call this as portfolio H and portfolio I. Tell me, which of these two portfolios will you recommend to the investor? I. I. I? Because for the same level of risk, portfolio I is giving you higher level of return. Correct? So any rational investor will never invest into this blue part of the curve, which is convex. That rational investor will always invest into the black portion here. And this black portion is called as, as efficient frontier. So what Harry Markowitz essentially did for you is, he said if there are, let's say 1000 practical portfolios that can be constructed, at least we are not going to invest into 500 of them because those are inefficient portfolios. Now we have to choose between the section of portfolios which are available on the black line. This tip of the bullet here, let me call this as C. This tip of the bullet is called global minimum variance portfolio. They have given it in your syllabus. Now I will show you how it was constructed by Harry Markowitz, what he actually did. It looks the same, but there is a slightly different uh, logic he used when he built it for the first time. The target for Harry Markowitz was to come up with a portfolio or eliminate those portfolios which are not smart and then identify only the smart portfolios. 
so he first started using the optimization technique he defined a return let's say expected return that we want to earn is 14% so he said that he put that condition into a software that i want to earn a expected return of 14% which all possible combinations of a and b can satisfy this equation are, are we together on this then let us say for 14% there were three portfolios available or four portfolios then he chose the one which is got lowest standard deviation then he put a condition that expected return let us say is 14.5 which are those portfolios which can earn a return of 14.5% then again he chose that portfolio which has got lowest standard deviation and then he plotted only those portfolios which had lowest standard deviation for given level of return and then he said that this graph where you have could put the condition that each of the portfolio for given level of return exhibits lowest possible standard deviation he called this graph in his original work as minimum variance frontier and of course this again this point c is the global minimum variance portfolio so the interpretation of this minimum variance frontier is that each of the portfolio on the graph exhibits lowest standard deviation for given level of return are you following this so two sentences that i want you to write down both of them are testable minimum variance frontier shows lowest standard deviation for given level of return that is how you interpret minimum variance frontier lowest standard deviation for given level of return fine but this portion so now next subheading that you would give is efficient frontier efficient frontier first point lowest standard deviation for given level of return same as the first one lowest standard deviation for given level of return highest return second point highest return for given level of standard deviation highest return for given level of standard deviation if i pick up any portfolio on minimum variance frontier it is lowest standard deviation for given return but it is not highest return for given level of standard deviation why because if i give this standard deviation then this portfolio is not the highest return for given level of standard deviation but for efficient frontier both the things work lowest standard deviation for given return and highest return for given standard deviation is it fine now one more testable point if short sell condition is relaxed if short sell condition is relaxed then efficient frontier efficient frontier will shift up and to the right efficient frontier will shift up and to the right interpretation below this returns will increase and risk will increase returns will increase and risk will increase that means your new efficient frontier maybe would be somewhat like this because short sell allowed so volatility will increase and since you would be investing more than 100% into risky assets your returns will also increase quick 2 minute revision we have we have asset a and we have asset b how to select the asset is outside the scope of 
current set of theory that we are discussing we have selected both of them we are not going to choose one of them we are going to invest in both current theory is helping us decide what proportion we want to invest in so we have expected return let's say 10 15 we have standard deviation let's say 5 8 and we have correlation coefficient 0.7 what we did is we created let's say 1000 different combinations of a and b where we put 1% in a 99% in b and so on and so forth then we calculated for each of the combination so let me call them as c1 c2 c3 c4 combinations for each of the combination we calculated expected return which is a weighted average then we calculated standard deviation using the formula then we plotted that onto a graph and the graph came out to be like this this point is the global minimum variance portfolio this point is the efficient frontier now this curve we would call as portfolio possibility frontier okay an alternate way of doing this is this is directly yes it would be a equation correct it it will have an equation but it will not be a linear since it's a curve it would have some some power now we said that let's say i want to earn a return of 12% so you put a condition in your software that which all portfolios would get me a return of 12% short sell allowed so three portfolios were possible then you chose the one which has got lowest standard deviation 13% you chose the one lowest standard deviation then you plotted that onto a graph this graph now is called as minimum variance frontier where each of the point on this graph has a lowest standard deviation for given level of return but this part of the graph here also has highest return for given level of standard deviation is it fine hmm? allowed or not allowed both but yeah in minimum variance frontier you have to allow it because otherwise it will generate only one combination for that or maybe not many combination for given set of expected returns Are we on agreement here? Hmm?